Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very great pleasure to be here with you today. Um, our civilization has a compass with respect to its own sustainability. The compass is important for everything, but it's especially important when you're developing powerful technologies. And it turns out when you're doing that, because of the nature of the technology, you can be pulling on the tail of the needle, pulling up, or you can be pushing up on the tip of the needle. And in Pennsylvania and energy right now, where we have coal and gas being so important, um, unfortunately, coal and gas is the other guy on the left, and renewables are the guy on, is the guy on the right. We need the guy on the right to win. We develop technologies for their technical performance and their in economic performance. And <coughs> unfortunately, uh, nature cannot handle the power of the technologies that we have developed. We have to embed in existing, uh, in new technologies, we have to embed health performance and environmental performance. The technologies of the future will mix these together so that health and environmental performances are integral parts of the value proposition. Now, with coal, we're saying, okay, we should not develop coal because it's so bad and gas is better, but it may well be that coal pr pr uh, that has the needle pointing due south. Where does gas have it pointing? Gas maybe has it pointing at south, 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 southeast, or maybe southeast. We need to do much better than that. When you're developing new technologies, is a critical question. How does your technology impact the poor and the powerless? And if you listen to that question and you're really concerned about it, you're going to be doing things that point the need needle true north. So when it comes to sustainable technologies, there are three grand challenges. The first is obviously safe energy. So here we are in the city of Pittsburgh, this glorious city, which is a testament to human ingenuity and, and determination, but also the center of this enormous gas industry, the Marcellus Shale. Ladies and gentlemen, last year, we put more than 30 billion tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. That was a 5.3% increase on the prior year. United States featured prominently in that. What we're doing in, in Pennsylvania uh, features prominently in that. We need to actually re be reducing it by 5.3%, not increasing it by 5.3%. Now, we're saying to ourselves that we're doing this to build an economy, to give more people a better life. But the truth of the matter, if you really look at what the gas industry does, there is never going to be a great deal of jobs, good jobs, in the gas industry. The numbers go like this. The gas industry has 630,000 uh, jobs nationally. It produces a quarter of the nation's energy. Uh, coal, 21% of the nation's energy, has about 190,000 jobs. Uh, solar has 100,000 jobs with way less than 1%. And uh, uh, wind, with just over 1%, has nearly 90,000 jobs. The really good jobs are in renewables. I call it um, jewels at jobs, or jobs at jewels, I should say. The number of jobs uh, that you find per unit energy in the different se sectors, renewables absolutely whips uh, carbon technologies. And look at this, uh, look at this uh, map. It should give you pause. This is the map. We have about 10,000 earthquakes a year, and this is a 35-year co uh, uh, collection. Um, that should really give you pause when you think about where we put the nuclear reactors, and secondly, about whether or not we should have 50,000 gas wells in Pennsylvania. Our future in safe energy is in renewables, and we need to be investing in there dramatically as quickly as possible. The second big area is renewable feedstocks. We need to be getting things from recently dead plant matter rather than fossilized plant matter. We can do a lot for sustainability there. And the third one is has the substances. There are three big ideas. Uh, bi biomimicry, where we put our technologies are comprised of the same elements that we are as opposed to wacky ones, and that will keep us safe. Getting rid of persistent uh, environmentally mobile compounds will help us, and most particularly, Get, we've learned in the last two decades that certain chemicals, and unfortunately everyday chemicals, can disrupt cellular development at environmentally relevant concentrations, producing impaired creatures. We've got to deal with that, and I'm very privileged to be part of a community of environmental health scientists and green chemists internationally working on that problem. In my group at Carnegie Mellon, what we do is we mimic 
the enzymes that nature uses to break things down. And so this is a chemist's picture of an enormous enzyme called galacto, uh, galactoperoxidase. We're mimicking the peroxidase enzymes. And what it does is it takes a little molecule, hydrogen peroxide, and it disinfects your mouth. Um, you produce it in your salivary glands. Um, here it is. Uh, we have produced a tiny molecule that uh, mimics that, mimics it just as well. There's the hydrogen peroxide. This is how it works. Uh, there's the catalyst. We'll simplify it to a picture like that. We'll put it in water. It picks up two waters. The waters fall off. Along comes hydrogen peroxide. Hydrogen peroxide breaks down, throws away a water. In comes a, a substrate, a, a pollutant. The pollutant can be. We'll have a football to show you show you what uh, the process. And then that root gets reproduced, and it happens thousands of times a minute. And every so often, in comes a, a football that's already been oxidized, and that gets oxidized ag uh, again. And before you know it, the football is broken down to tiny, small molecules that aren't toxic. This is what, are, what is the football? It's many things. It's dyes and pesticides and drugs, and on and on and on we go. Uh, not everything, by, by all means, but many of the most worrying things. And so we have several technologies going commercial. One of them is very important for um, human health. I'll be very happy, happy with that. But let's come back. You know, it doesn't matter what I do. It can't even matter what any of us does if we don't deal with this carbon problem. The carbon problem is absolutely critical. And sustainability is about what you do with your power. And if you look, for example, at a country like Bangladesh, here it is, up in the top of the bay in Bengal, about as big as Pennsylvania, one human being for every two in America, 150 million people. That's its topography. It's going underwater. Because of what we're doing with oil, coal, and natural gas, we are heating the oceans, acidifying the oceans, um, filling the, killing the oceans, and filling the oceans. At 3.5 millimeters per year in terms of the filling, these countries are, are gone if we don't deal with it. OK, uh, the last thing is we're being told that natural gas is God's gift to America. I dispute that. God would not give a gift to any country that would bring so much human suffering. In fact, what the, the gift to the country is right outside. It's the solar energy, and it's, it's given to everybody, and we can capture it and use it. That's where we should be investing. Thank you very much. Thank you.